cool to see their creative work throughout the year and kind of their potential and how that developed. And we got a good flavor of the vibrant music school here, kind of showed them around the campus, got, got them to see what the university experience would be like. And then I got to see what their high school experience was like, and they all expanded upon their work that they did. So here's David. coming out tonight. A lot more people than I expected. That's awesome. <laughs> right. So, I am one of the music ambassadors this year, as well as art. And well, I'm going to start from way back in the way back. I was involved in music basically all of my life. I've been exposed to it since I was born pretty much and eventually picked up guitar on my own and I've been playing for about past seven-ish years. Um, I came to Fast Forward in 10th grade and this school has an amazing arts program and personally I was involved with the music program especially and in this picture we have the Michael Jackson music performance we did which every so often almost every single term there's a music performance class and they put on some amazing shows and it's really amazing to see all the talent and the students that we have here. And as a music ambassador, we've spent a lot of time up at campus throughout the year, taking campus tours, doing various other things up at campus. One of the coolest things we did was going to see Dr. Lonnie Smith, great jazz musician. And luckily enough, we were able to attend a workshop he did during the middle of the school day. And got Ryan over here who was gracious enough to take us all up there to experience that. Later that night we went and saw his official show with in the Little Morgan Theater. Just massive amounts of people there to see such an amazing musician. Me and Ari and Kramer all got to take a tour up at UPR and then go to Aggie Ice Cream afterwards and Kramer's helped us a lot up at campus just going to see all the different cool things we have available up there. And this UPR place was surprisingly massive to me. If you ever get a chance to go take a tour there, I would highly recommend it. I think I broke it. Just kidding. All right. One of the big things we did, probably the biggest thing we did, was a project up at Edith Bowen. It was for four days that we got to work with these third grade students. And for me and Ari, we created a music video with the kids that they basically wrote a song and they basically directed their own video. We just helped them shoot it and edit it. And Ari was the mastermind behind all of that. So I am graduating this year and I'm going to be heading to Portland State University next year, hoping to get myself involved with some music up there, but primarily major in biochemistry. And if you see there, that building is called Lincoln Hall. It's an entire former high school dedicated to their music program. So I wanted to give a big thanks to everybody who is involved with this program. The Arts Bridge has helped a lot to expose us to campus life and just give us an opportunity to have some good extracurricular fun. And it's been a lot of fun with that. video we made with the kids.
you again for coming on and supporting us all. I'd like to hand the time over to Ari. Thank you. 
Okay, it looks like uh, our USC mentor, Michael, has stepped out and saw him. He's the big one. Yes, That's not missing you. Michael, are you here? He was. He was. Yeah. He, he's a theater student and he's preparing for the lyric season coming up. So he's a, a good actor. So he's stepped out, unfortunately. Uh, this year, uh, we've had a wonderful opportunity to have two awesome students with video masters. We have Anthony Torres, um, who's been with us for four years. It's been fun to see him grow up, uh, especially with the videos he's made. You see a, a fun variety from him today. Also, we have our first graduating junior ambassador, uh, Dylan Anderson, who's the internet ambassador. Uh, he comes from a, um, a art background. And it was interesting to have him this year as he brought a lot of multimedia to what he did with video, adding motion to his work. Um, I know they're really excited to show you their portfolios. They did get the opportunity to go around uh, Utah State with Michael. They went to a lot of different places up on campus. I think their favorite spot was at the ice cream. <laughs> yes. But they had educational opportunities as well. Even though Aggie Ice Cream is educational, it's important to know what ice cream is. So without further ado, we'll start with Anthony Torres. Well, like Andy said, I've been at Forest Ford for four years. Uh, started at the video room, never left. Um, and love to act. That's basically it. Um, I have a slideshow of the past videos that I've done in the four years, and it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Um, 
They're all smart. I love you two of them. Uh, well, this kid right here, played ball with the kid, he beat me. I let him. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we all had an amazing time. Me and Dylan, we really appreciate this kid's time. And um, here's a video that we made with him.
be a dancer. You know? One of those professional dancers. characters which was pretty hard. Um, it's called Jin vs. Gang. Um, 
my next project I wanted to go over was a little animation. I wanted to test out using vectors and incorporating just a little bit of movement in the art. So here it is. Oh, before I start this up, actually, I'm going to give a little clarity thing. There's no sound, that, because it's a GIF. And GIFs are just pictures with no sound. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> um, then I wanted to go into a more complicated GIF that I would hand draw. So this is the first part. It's a simple outline of the GIF. Then we have a little bit of color, dash of shading, and a lot of overlays to make it look nice. And then finally, we have the finished product which is just this hovering, which took seriously like two weeks. <laughs> now with this you can't really tell, but there's almost 50 layers just of little fine details. Every background, every, well every animation has its own special layer. And the next thing I would like to go off is my Edith, well go on about, is my Edith <laughs> Bowen which I had a wonderful time with a bunch of kids that helped me make a video. Uh, you, you just gotta watch it, it's really fun. Oh, we first got a little picture of me standing in the background. <laughs> but this is the video they made, and it was really great working with them. They were amazing. Basically, I animated about half of it, and I had a lot of help from Brian back there. By the way, that guy is a wonderful animator. Let's take a look. Well, let's take a look at what we did. There we go. So, what do you want to do after graduation? Think about that. Um, no, I want to be a baker on a space station in space. I want to be a baker on a space in space. Fight aliens. You want that? That's stupid. Next. <laughs>
were so much help, and they were wonderful to work with. There, uh, there was so much going behind the scenes, too, but I'm going to show a lot of episode one, just as like, kind of a sneak peek. Yeah. So talented on their own, and so 
Excited for them to share their work. And you guys are going to be blown away by what they do. <laughs> Some of you may actually know them from going to school with them. But these are also completely unedited, raw, 35 millimeter film. Throughout the year, I worked with a few different alternative mediums besides photography. Um, the one on the right was done in Sharpie, both on the paper and on the shoe itself, and it was for it was an arts theme for the van shoe design this year. Um, this one on the right was a acrylic painting done of a gypsy woman which, in all honesty, was just influenced by listening to a lot of Enya, if anyone is familiar. <laughs> <laughs> but the beginning of my arts ambassador journey really began with this painting. Um, I started it last January of 2015. It's all done in acrylic paint, and it probably took me up until September to finish it, because it was the first painting that I've ever done outside of an art class. And uh, I actually used this one in my portfolio when I was attempting to become Arts Ambassador. Though all of my other arts really do represent my passion and my own self, this is really where my like, soul has come to reside and blossom in, and that's with stippled.work. This is the very first one I ever did, and it actually took me also about seven months to accomplish just because it was more of a curiosity at the time, and I honestly did not know how anybody had the patience to sit down and draw with dots. And when I first started, I will admit, like, I lacked the creative insight to know how to shape dots. But regardless, I continued to use it through a diff few different uh, pieces of mine. This one was the first competition I entered into as an arts ambassador. It was for Be the Whale because Utah was chosen this year and our pictures were supposed to represent the endangerment of the southwestern little flycatcher. So as I have put in mind with the declining sand from the living bird to the dead bird school and the crying eye to represent the pain and sorrow and impact that this held on humanity, but I also included the white bird as kind of a symbol for a possible solution and a hope for a better future. And on that similar note, um, from Little Bloomsbury, where this theme was the passion within. And instead of going along the lines of animals, I decided to take the concept of the need for tolerance within society of humanity, and how in order to change something in the world, someone must open their mind first. And the next two slides are a couple of pieces that I did that are a little different than the other ones, just because I decided to try and experiment with a couple different techniques. This one, my goal was to fill the entire page because a lot of my artwork has a lot of white background. So I wanted to see if I could fill the whole thing, not just with dots, but I also used some solid black background. And this one was supposed to be towards the evolution of humanity and its beliefs. So there's a few different things in there, such as like the hand of Hamsa. Um, there's things about GMO and recycling, different various objects. This one was... Um, Another experiment of mine, like I said, with a few different techniques. Um, instead of outlining this one, I decided to try and compose it completely of dots. So there's no hard lines, there's no outlines. It was all done first in pencil, and then I just dotted away. <laughs> this one was one that we 
did for the Utah Senate Chamber, and I actually did win 15th out of the top 21 of 93 statewide entries. Woo! <laughs> this one was my abstract uh, take on the architecture of the chandelier that hangs in the center of the Capitol building. But we were actually only given nine days to accomplish it, so it was a bit more challenging than all the other pieces. But as a result, I was awarded a visit to the Senate Chamber on February 7th to see that my artwork would be hung up in the Capitol building from the middle of February to the middle of March, and was awarded by the Senate of our county a $300 trust fund scholarship for future educational purposes, such as tuition and textbooks. <coughs> was the last one that I did when my last competition as an arts ambassador and it is actually the piece that is hanging up by the door because I'm going to be donating it to Fast Forward as a thank you. Um, this was one that I did for Stephen Henniger's which I actually did find out yesterday won first place in the category. <laughs> piece that I showed you that was simple that took seven months. This one I did in seven days because as I developed my stippling art portfolio, it really kind of changed from being a curiosity and experiment to really becoming a sort of meditation of mine that I try to use not only to better myself as an artist but as a person because in my, my hopes for the future is that I can take this artwork and I can get people to not only like pay attention to the amount of time and hard work it puts into my art, but the message that I try to display with my art. But honestly, I can't go without saying a special thank you to these people and of course my friends and family because without them this opportunity would have never been possible and it surely would not have been as incredible and growing as it has been. So thank you. <laughs> watercolors, pastels, acrylics, mandalas, and porcelain. So we're going to start off with watercolors and just a little bit of inspiration to start us off with okay? it. Um, my main idea with the watercolors that inspired all of my work that I've done is really just lots of color. I like to have a very colorful palette because it makes the art interesting and beautiful in my opinion. So um, this one was actually an interesting technique that I did with watercolor. I, it's a fairly large piece of paper about this big and I got all the paint on it and I had to actually maneuver it around, swirl it around so they could all create that blending effect on there. Very difficult. It took about like three days to dry once it was all on there, but I liked the way it turned out. This is the same technique, but a little different. Mostly just working with color again, just experimenting. Um, this is a portrait, but it's not realistic, obviously. I've done a lot of portrait work, but I've started to move away from that and move more into just basic color. This one is a little older, it's mostly just kind of playing with the concepts of 
ink and watercolor, and I wanted to just see what I could do with that. Again, this is just working with watercolor, and I use masks to get the straight lines on it, just because I like Disney, because he doesn't like Disney. <laughs> Alright, this one is actually for um, the CBTD bus wrap competition. I painted the mountain backgrounds and the best for it, and did the, the, the pen drawings over top. So there were several entries. We didn't win anything, unfortunately, but it was fun to do. <laughs> I have this quote on this apron at home, and every time I put it on to cook, I read it, and it's fantastic. <laughs> this one is actually for the um, Utah Senate competition, like Megan mentioned before. Um, so obviously she did dot work and <coughs> watercolor. She wants something, but I didn't. Oh well. <laughs> No hard feelings, folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is one of the first ones in the, of the watercolor ink I've ever experimented with. A lot of people, when they look at it, they find meaning in it. I don't know. I just started to do Mulan and then added more stuff as I went. And there we go. That's interesting. Um, this one was both watercolor and ink, mostly just experimenting. It, it took a while to get all the layers of splatters on it, but I like the way it turned out. Alright, this one, as Mandy mentioned before, the Little Bloomsbury competition. Um, the theme for that was the passion within, and I did a very literal take on that, pretty much. When everyone gets to know me, they know that I love art, and that's about it. They don't know that I actually like something more than that. So that's kind of what it is. You see the splatters of the watercolor represents my outward passion for art. But what we actually did there was cut out the painting itself around the hands and the shirt and skin. And with Andy's help, I put a book inside of it just a few pages, so it actually looks like it's a book there. So it's actually 3D in frame itself. It's one of my favorite pieces of art. Yeah. All right, moving on to pastels. This is a shorter one. Um, this is also inspired by art, pretty much just this is what, like, one of the most exciting things I have in this section. Um, just playing around with color and stippling with pastels. It's kind of a weird picture right now. I don't know what the final person is, but... This is actually very old. It's years old. Um, I was just playing around with realism, trying to see how real I could get my drawings to look. Uh, this is pastel. It's fairly old. I was just barely kind of experimenting with portraits. I wasn't sure what I could do with that yet, but I have come a long way since then. And this one is actually, it was for the was it Springville competition, I think. And it's the stippling pastels again. This one's hanging over there. I'm going to donate it in school. Alright, that's all for pastels. On two acrylics. This, I don't know, this is just kind of a fun painting to do. Didn't really have me in, but I like this section, it was fun. This actually is probably the first acrylic painting I've ever done. It's Bob Bass inspired. Watched a tutorial as I painted it, and then I was done painting it. <laughs> so, And then I painted this when I was in one of Andy's um, art classes. Actually, before that class, I barely knew how to paint at all. And this was my first 
realistic painting that was very successful, and I love the way it turned out. So actually, I'm a very confident painter now. This is a very recent thing I've done. I entered it into Steen's Heidegger. Didn't give me, but oh well. Um, that's actually a portrait of me when I was about like three or four. And um, everything around it is just kind of random jewels and little sequins and colored things that I just kind of glued on there. I didn't have a, I, an idea when I was making it. I just thought, let's just put this stuff on this blank canvas, see how it turns out. And when I was done, I actually realized that it looks like that is the child's mind and their imagination. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, the Respect Banner is actually a fairly big deal. Um, it's pretty big. It's three feet by five feet. And it's hanging out in one of the halls of school. Probably all you students know that. Um, and every year we paint over it. And we do new lettering to kind of catch everyone's eye. And then the students sign it to pledge respect. But of course, a lot of them don't keep up with that. It actually took me several days. It was fairly complicated to do, but it was really fun. And then after everyone signed it, I think it was it. It's ugly now. I really like this painting. It's actually painted on a t-shirt. I painted that for Andrew for his birthday. I was a year late on that. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you can see it's Alice in Wonderland inspired. I don't know. He kind of came up with the idea, and then I painted it. So it's kind of a team project there. But wearable art. It's very thick, though. It's like a shield. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all for acrylics. Now we're on to mandalas. Most of these aren't really very complex, they're just what you see. But um, I was just kind of experimenting with what I could do because Megan was doing a lot of dot work and I had a lot of competition. I wanted to see if I could do something similar. So that's why I started. These were just a lot of experiments. I had a very limited palette. And they're actually on um, pieces of black paper. They're about this big, very small. And I actually just had like a round paintbrush basically dipped in the paint, dipped it onto the paper, created perfect circles. It was very relaxing, very calming to do that. So I like the way it turned out. Um, now onto the drum skins that Ryan gave me as a project to do. They're fun to work with because. They're fairly large things about this day. And I did the same thing, dipped the paint in the paintbrush in the paint, dipped it onto the drum skin. And I could get lots of color going on, lots of intri intricacy. And yeah, I don't know what happened to it. It kind of just disappeared in some ways. This actually is my favorite probably piece that I've done very recently. It's another drum skin. It's a lot bigger, um, and a lot of people don't understand when I try to explain what I did to get it to look like that. I actually took the drum skin itself and I just painted it completely black, and then I had a mechanical pencil that had a little metal tip on it, and I could just scratch the paint right off, and then it would show the drum skin surface underneath. And actually when you hold it up to light, the light shines through. Especially, it's really cool when you have a colored light behind it, because then you get a color from behind it. It's really very cool in person, very intricate. And hopefully, I'll be able to work more with this when I get other projects to do. That's just a watercolor. Mm -hmm. it's good. This was one of the first ones I did. It's again fairly small, about this big. Um, I just dipped the, dipped the toothpick in white paint and put it on there. It took me about a week. 
and I wasn't sure where I was going with it, but that's how it ended up. And then I kind of applied the mandalas to the Vans shoe competition. I wish I had more pictures of these shoes, but for some reason I don't. They're, I think the back is better looking, it's more intricate. Um, but yeah, basically for that competition, just we got some shoes and we had to paint them or draw them or whatever. And it was a, a nationwide competition and for all high schools around the nation and the winner got $50,000 and their design printed off on all the shoes that it was printed off on and sold nationwide. I don't know who won that, but I didn't. Alright, last category, portraits. This is actually the first portrait I've ever done self-portrait. It's the biggest one I've ever done and most frustrating because I had about three days to do it and I needed at least two weeks. So it was very rushed, but it turned out fairly okay. This is not a portrait, I know that. Um, but this is was it, anamorphic drawings. Glasses go on the face, so it kind of goes with that. But yeah, I don't know, I was just bored in our class one day, so I decided to do that. And it turned out pretty cool. Alright, back to portraits. Um, most of these were just experiments. I wanted to see what I could do last year. Um, one of the arts ambassadors, Megan Frazier, was doing portraits, and we kind of had a competition throughout the year to see who could do the better portrait. We kind of one up in each other, and it lasted all the way until the summer after she graduated, and then it just kind of died off. So that's when I stopped doing portraits. So. This one's actually charcoal. I don't even know how I did that with charcoal. <laughs> I don't even know how these things are going to turn out. I just start with the outline, and then it's at least like weeks of frustration, and then something amazing comes out. I'm like, that's cool. I don't know how I did that. This is the smallest one I've ever done. It's two inches by four inches, and I have to use a mechanical pencil. And like a magnifying glass, basically. And it was extremely <coughs> frustrating, and I spent weeks on it, but it was really fun. And it was one of the first ones I got to be almost hyper-realistic, because it's very <coughs> close to the, the picture itself. This one, um, again, it's just charcoal on paper. Really, there's not much else there. I just wanted to have it be unfocused and then come and focus on the eyes because they were like really, really, really cool looking. This one's also very small. I had to use a mechanical pencil for this one as well. It was the first one that I hadn't blended out on the paper. I just kept the texture that came from the pencil. All the other ones are smooth for the texture of skin, but I wanted to see how I could turn it out with making it rough. This is a familiar face for most of you. This was also done with mechanical pencil. Um, I did it for the Students Henniger competition a year ago, and I think I got second place for it. But, so we obviously liked it. <laughs> And my last and best portrait. <laughs> this was probably the last one that I did competing with Megan last year. And I did this for the Summerfest and then displayed it there. I put it on Facebook and then two days later she posted something better and it made me mad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's it took me a while, a few weeks, but I'm glad how it turned out.
All right. I would like to say thank you to Arts Bridge and Holly. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And Amanda and McKenna. Thanks for the field trips. They're interesting. And all of us forward because it's all amazing. And Stephanie, of course, Steph, you're amazing. Like you've been amazing for years. I'm so sad that you're coming back. I forgot to put Jill on here. Thank you, Jill. Um, and the William D. Pickmore Foundation, because that makes it possible. And Andy, because you taught me a lot of art over the years that I had known before. get a scholarship. It's a thousand dollars each, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the William D. Bigmore Foundation and um, Eric Lindsay this year are making the scholarships happen and um, I really want to thank them for providing the opportunity for these kids and Holly, like she's amazing. I'm, the work that our teachers and, that, and, and, and Ryan and Andy and Andy have done I've seen the late nights working and spending a lot of extra time all year. And basically, you know, all, the, all the students' lives through the fast forward, they've been putting a lot of extra effort into these kids. So it's pretty neat that I know that they'll never forget. Um, and not just these three teachers, but all of our teachers. I mean, they have to be flexible with these kids when they go on field trips um, and, and help them make up extra work. And, and these kids have just put so many hours in and just blows my mind and they're high school kids that's pretty dang neat so um i want to thank everyone for coming out today yeah. um i just want to comment on the amazing amount of dedication that these high school students have i mean i'm thinking about when i was a senior in high school and the things that i was doing and i probably wouldn't have been so dedicated <laughs> and so i think that they're not only just amazing for all that they've accomplished, but I think it's so awesome what an example they are for the fast forward students that are younger than them. So thank you guys for being so great. Um, if there are, I, I see familiar faces in the audience. If you have been a fast forward arts ambassador ever, please stand up.